I'm here in Los Angeles. I'm here getting my visa. I had to fly here from Wisconsin, long story. Being here has brought up a lot of memories, like my memories of my monastic days, because the monastery where I trained at is right up the street, about an hour and a half. And I'm thinking about going there, taking you there. We're gonna have to go incognito, though. I don't wanna talk to anybody or see anybody. I, I haven't, uh, I'm somewhat um, in soft exile from my former community, so. I just wanna show you the setting, the area where I used to practice. It's quite beautiful up there. So we're gonna take a little journey today. Join me. So I'm packed up, ready for my journey. I got my uh, my sun hat in case the sun is beating down on my head. I got my warmer hat because it's usually 10 degrees uh, cooler up in the mountain. I got my glasses. Yesterday I sat on them and broke them. I was hanging out with uh, our mutual friend Brad Warner and his dog Ziggy. Right now I'm on the Fairfax. I'm taking Fairfax to the 10 and we take the 10 east. I pulled over because my glasses fell off. Also because I'm having some second thoughts about this. Fortunately, I live by what I call the coward's clause. The coward's clause is commit to something. Then if you decide you don't want to do it halfway through, get out. Be a coward. It's okay. Coward's clause. I recommend it. It's bumper to bumper on the 10 freeway. I'm getting the feelies being back here. It's uh, all coming back to me. I haven't been here in four and a half years, but it's just, it's like yesterday. There it is in the distance. Can you see it? That's the monastery. There it is, last chance to turn back. It stands before us. Here we go. Couldn't be any closer. We're almost there, hang with me. Right there. That's where we used to meditate. We're almost there. I just wanted to pause and take a breath and show you how beautiful it is here. How can you not get enlightened on this mountaintop? We're about three quarters of the way up. I just found a beautiful place to stop and uh, show you around. Maybe this is as far as I get. It's my old cabin, the Sheikah cabin. Sayonara. Whew. Lots of memories, lots of memories. Um, I stopped because I need to process just even being on the property, but also I need to pee and maybe take you up to the waterfall. I can show you the beautiful starting point for when we used to hike up 10,000 feet to the top of the mountain. Very quiet up here. So I'm at about, I don't know, 7,500 feet right now. Whew. High altitude, maybe, did I just say this? 7,500 feet. I'm um, feeling a little dizzy, also feeling good. In my experience, monasteries belong at altitudes like this. There's something about being up this high and above the mucky muck that resets your nervous system. As William Blake said, wisdom comes when men and mountains meet. This can't be got by jostling on the street. You can hear the waterfall up ahead of us. The only sound out here right now is that falling, rushing water. It reminds me of a Dharma talk from Shunryo Suzuki. It's very vaginal. The water obviously comes from the mountains and the snow that melts up there just trickles down the mountain and this waterfall goes pretty much year round. I've never seen it dry. This is about a 30 minute walk from the Zen Center. 
Shunryu Suzuki in his book, Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind, has a great little Dharma talk about a waterfall like this. And he says, you know, all of being, the whole cosmos, it's like that waterfall. And human beings, our lifetime, our life spans, we're like a little droplet of water that comes off the waterfall as it's flowing down. And for a brief moment, we get to experience this separation from this source waterfall and then just a brief moment and then we come down at the bottom and join with it again. I always think of that whenever I see this waterfall. We used to come here and strip naked and take a little baptismal shower in this waterfall. Whew. Well, friends, that's all she wrote. I'm feeling exhausted, tired, dehydrated, tired, exhausted, and dehydrated and very grateful in fact. Um, I'm reminded of my time at the monastery where like that little drop of water on the waterfall I got to briefly separate from society but now I've merged back into it again. Something like that. I'm looking for a take home here. So I'm back in my car getting ready to head down the mountain. I just had this amazing experience coming back to my vehicle inhaling and having this scent memory come back to me, the smell of the mountaintop. And I'm thinking, what is that? It brings me back to my days up here. And then I remembered, oh yeah, it's brake pads. Everybody's hitting their brakes as they come down the mountain switchbacks. Just had a really harrowing experience. I was driving down the switchbacks at admittedly a swift clip when coming up the other way there was a car and a car zoomed around it and I slammed on my brakes and skidded to a slide and they just managed to get around me in time. In other words, man, I'm done with this day. A year ago, we weren't sure what was going to happen with live music, and here we are tonight, and y'all look so lovely, so beautiful. Basically, I think the most present um, I felt for quite a while is right now. And yes! It's, it's amazing to me that you can be part of that. Um, but also, this song is about is about not missing what's in front of you. Um, yeah. It's called "I Miss It." Thank you. Still haven't fixed my glasses.